Hey there. Day number 77, or stream number 77. Some of these streams I do two in a day. So I'm going to continue working today on implementing raft consensus for my server cluster. So what is this? It's really around stream 70 I switched. So my first 70 streams on Twitch were about building my own web server from scratch. Since then, so the following seven streams have been about making use of this web server to make a game. So it's going to be a multiplayer game, which I need to have a back-end server cluster. So keep the game online 24-7 and survive crashes and be able to take server one server down at a time to upgrade them to new versions. Need some kind of algorithm to keep the servers together. So I'm using the raft consensus algorithm as a way to keep servers all in sync. So just really briefly go over my system architecture. So you can imagine if you're playing the game, you're on a client, it's going to be in, the, in browser. So it'll be JavaScript client. Hey there, Rally Monkey. And you will connect your browser to my game server. There'll actually be multiple game servers, but the client will only really know about one of them. And the thing about each of these servers is they'll all have copies of the game state. And they'll be con constantly talking to each other to maintain that consensus, as in they all agree on what the game state is. So one of these servers is going to be elected the leader, according to the algorithm, in order to make decisions about how to m move the game forward. That leader is also going to be the one that holds this main port open so that clients can connect to it. So, there's also an orchestrator server in the background, and really all that that does is it launches servers that have crashed. Since a server can't start itself, I thought it would be more convenient to have one system-level service that the OS keeps running, and have that just monitor and keep up all the other servers. So, one concept within Realm, or within Raft, is that your, your server state is built up through a sequence of commands, or what they call log entries. I call them journal entries, but it's the same thing. We'll, we'll have a journal inside of each game server that is used, or basically I have an, another component executor that takes this journal and plays journal entries one after another to construct the actual game objects. And the coordinator component in my game server is gonna be the one that's talking to other servers and to the client. So it's collecting and sending back out these journal entries and talking to clients and all that good stuff. And then there'll be a component in the middle called the reconciler that kind of takes uh, entries from the coordinator and from local methods and kind of figures out what to do with them, kind of collates them together. So today we were working on the raft algorithm. I decided to make it somewhat reusable. So instead of coding it directly into the coordinator. We're coding it into a component. I should probably draw it off to the side here called wrapped. And coordinator will have one of it. And coordinator will kind of delegate to wrapped this imaginary box here to do the actual algorithm to for selecting a leader and achieving consensus between servers. And the actual concrete game implementation meaning of all the log entries the algorithm maintains consensus for will be handled by the rest of the server. Hey there, Ken Kinematics. All right, it's early. Ken Kinematics. It's early or it's late. I tend to slur words. Okay, so let me just get my bearings here. So this link should bring you to this page. My notebook's public and uh, readable by everyone. And I have links to the algorithm here. So yeah. The plan I put together here is there was one thing I noticed yesterday that there's a pair of functions that aren't in the correct place. I want to kind of quickly move those. That shouldn't take too long. And then here's some unit unit test use cases that I want to put into 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 the code. And this should help uh, complete the uh, election process in the algorithm. So, and this is going to be a somewhat shorter stream because. I have to stop by, I don't know, 1.45 p.m. Pacific, so 
somewhat less than three hours stream. But I've been trying to get into a 10 to 2 p.m. schedule. So four hours a day, Monday through Friday. Okay, let's get into the code. So coordinator, it's got a mobilize, demobilize method. It really doesn't belong in the public API, so I'm going to fix that. Okay. Coordinator. Yeah, I noticed this yesterday. These, this mobilize, demobilize doesn't really belong here. Although we do have to set the web gate up, though. Oh, no, still, uh, that goes, right, that goes in the concrete, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. So we're going to take these, just take these methods out of here. I put them into here. Mm, I'll put them near the top. They kind of belong up near the top, don't they? I feel like they, they should go here. No particular reason. Uh, there we go. Oh. All right. So we have to remove them from the override set right down here. I think we're good. So just building that should be enough. And I'll check. Yeah. So this is, if I'm right, this is a really quick fix, a really quick change. Ooh, what happened there? <laughs> Do you want to see all five possibilities of what? Possibilities of getting rich quick? Yes. Otherwise, no. All right. Okay, everything's still running, so it's really just a refactoring step. Eh? What happened here? Oh, wait. I'm not on Raft, am I? I'm on the main game server. Yes. One of those days, my friends. Coordinator. I move mobilize, demobilize to. I don't know what I want to call it. It's we're moving it from public API, but we're moving it to what package? Really, is just package private API. Well, no, because they're both public. Okay, maybe I call the other one abstract. No, 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 no. I'll just leave it like this because I don't have a name for the other the other class. They're both public APIs, but one is more public than the other. <laughs> I don't need to push that yet. It's in the game. Okay. So we're one down. Zoop, that one's down. So now we're on to raft again. So let's just go into the first use case. Server should never send to itself. Yeah, so I think it already will pass this. I just don't have a coded up use case to cover it exactly. Right. So it's going to be kind of like this, only slightly different. I suppose we'll, we'll do it first. So. No, uh, no, no, not first. Second. So we don't have to test the, the interval stuff. All right, so we can just do that. So we can do that. Name, need to name, need to name. Okay, so how about we'll say request vote, not 
sent to self. Hmm. The trick is we don't really, like if it fails, it might not fail if we only wait for four, it might only fail if there's a fifth one, so I guess what I want to do is after waiting for four, we wait at least one more loop. That'll guarantee that it'll send them all, right? Actually, I guess we can just do this. And then we can expect... not equal configuration self to be equal to request to vote can uh no no oh we need to we need to hold on to who it was sent to don't we yeah so Let's we'll have to change what a message is. From message sent. So let's do that. And the git lens is getting in my way. I, I feel, kind of feel like disabling it. <laughs> Messages sent. Whoa. Okay, here it is. Okay, yeah, so right now message is sent as a vector of this, but I kind of want it to be a structure, so message info or something like that. And move this in there. And then store the recipient. Or, yeah, what's it called? That's the sender. Where's the yeah, receiver? Receiver number. This holds information about a message received from the unit under test. Okay, so it's going to break a bunch of other things. Right, so I need both of those arguments here, don't I? Message info dot... So we just... We're really just bundling up the arguments here into a structure and pushing it into the vector. And because this message info is an object on the stack, and I don't really want to make an unnecessary copy, I can do a move. Because the uh, auto generator move constructor, constructor for this type will be to just transfer ownership of this integer and, and this shared pointer. Actually, I guess it doesn't really matter. Those are both light objects. Oh, message info. I'm like, eh, why is it an error? Message and receiver. Right, so wherever there's a message, it's going to be message dot message. Which looks weird, which makes you want to rename it to message info. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Yeah, I know I messed up on that last one. I'll get to it in a minute. Uh, 
it wasn't recipient, right? It was a receiver. Cool. All right. I actually think this will already work, so I'll have to sabotage it in some way and make sure that the test is correct. Yeah, so let's sabotage it by just hacking this to be 11 or something like that. Then, since it should send the message to 11, because it's not 11, it's 5, it should fail, right? No. So this is a good thing I tried to sabotage it. It's, it's not working. Let's put another expectation in here. We expect there to be four instance, four messages, right? So if it isn't, it'll tell me why. I suspect that, that this wait isn't good enough. Yeah, it's in zero. Why is that? wonder if we have to wait at least two loops because the f first loop isn't good enough. No, I'm, it's, not, it's something else. I guess I'll have to look at the loop to see, to remind myself from yesterday. Uh, I don't need this stuff opener anymore. Okay. There's that worker loop. It should have started an election. But what does start election do? It should send messages. Oh, I wonder if this is running too quickly. No, it shouldn't. It should at least go one loop. Hmm. Just out of curiosity, what happens if I tell it to wait a whole bunch? It's uh, not true. Oh, wait a minute. Did I, did I miss a step? No, it does mobilize. Oh, oh, I have to wait before I advance the time. Yeah, I ran to that bug yesterday. Duh. Because otherwise it won't sample the initial time until too late. That's probably what it is. Cool, so... It checks that there were four. And then we can put this back to self. F I keep having to look down to find out where the F7 key is. I don't like that. I need to like get F key touch memory. <laughs> sabotage? Sabotage? I say sabotage or sabotage? Okay. Yeah, we'll just, we'll call this one check in. And of course I'm in the wrong directory because that's just how today's going. Maybe we should, uh, maybe we should, I should, um, or check that in. Change it to request vote sent to all servers except self. That way what I can do is I can be a little bit more elaborate here. I can do this. Well, auto. Instances equals, so we just make a copy of instance numbers, right? And then every time here we will remove it. So void instances erase message info dot receiver. And then we'll expect true instances empty. Well, we'll need to, we're, hold on. Actually, you know what I can do? I can instead of just say that they're equal and I can remove this one here. Set of unsigned ints with just configuration.self in the set. 
should equal the instances remaining, right? Then I don't have to keep doing that. Oh, it's a vector. Okay, so let's vector a set. And we'll initialize it by doing the, a vector, a uh, iterator range. There we go. So at the end, we should have a set of just ourselves in it. Let make sure that it's sent to everyone but us. Oh, wrong thing. To test it first. Cool, and then um, so sabotage it. Successfully sabotaged. We can actually see it pretty prints this set for us. Okay, getting better at finding the F7 key without looking. All right, now I can check in. So code is doing the right thing all along. We just didn't have really have a test for it. Test that request vote goes to all servers, but ourselves. Okay, what's next? Someone's got a case of the Mondays? I don't know if it's that, I just ate something that didn't sit well with me. Kind of threw off my whole weekend, actually. Okay, election messages should... Oh, I already have that in there. See, that, that's how that's how things are today. I did the first two in one. Okay, server should repeat sending a vote to any server to whom it does not receive a response. The trick is the certain time interval. I was reading about the choice of time intervals for R the RPC's calls because the white paper... This one, which, no, not this one, this one, which is uh, one of the three links I have in my to-do page. I think it's this last one. This one talks about um, all these things being RPC calls, like RPCs everywhere in here, right? But it doesn't really say how RPCs are expected to be implemented, like what are the semantics? They kind of assume that you know how, how they're done. So I was reading other sites searching for this, and what what made the most sense from reading a bunch of different things is that the certain time interval is going to be pretty short because if it was long then you'd wait so long that other servers would time out and start their own elections which you don't want so we want to pick a time interval that's much shorter than the election timeout the paper does talk about picking timeout Hold on. Let's see, it's one of those days. Near the bottom, they talk. If I search for less than, less than. No. Broadcast. Here we go. So they talk about a broadcast time. The time it takes a server to send RPCs in parallel to every server and receive the responses. So that's maybe a hint. But they say that it needs to be much less and less than. This kind of a paper means much less than. So if the election timeout were doing like 100 to 500 milliseconds, then much less would be maybe an order of magnitude, so anywhere between 10 and 50. So we'll have to have another configurable timeout, and it needs to be much less than the election timeout, right? MTBF is mean time between failure, by the way. For a good server, that should be forever. But probably months or weeks. Interesting things can happen if your servers are crashing quicker than the election timeout interval. Right, so we'll we'll set up a use case which simulates this where our server isn't responding. And it we should expect a retransmission after a certain amount of time. I think what I'll do is I build off of this 
um, test case where we have uh, that's unanimous. I want one where it's not unanimous. Maybe it's uh, right. So 11 is not going to vote for them. It's going to be somewhat like this. We'll have two servers that don't vote for it. No, three. Or we can have two servers vote no and one that we need to re reach, resend to. That's what we do. So what, about, what do I want to call it? Server retransmits request to vote or slow respond slow voters slow voters can you imagine like if you didn't vote and the election authority would start calling you saying hey you didn't vote we need you to vote and maybe they did that every hour that would be like raft they need everyone to vote and they'll pester you until you do or until the election timeout happens. Okay, so we're going to imagine that there's another timeout. And I don't think it needs to be a range. It can be a fixed value. We'll call it RPC timeout. It needs to be significantly smaller. So something like on the order of magnitude lower than... One, magnet, one order of magnitude less than the minimum election timeout. And I'm going to rename that right now. Let's rename that minimum election timeout. And this one is maximum election timeout. So we have an RPC timeout. So then we pass on through a certain amount of time to force an election. Actually, you know what I'll do? Yeah, so we'll wait for four. And then what we'll do is we'll send back three responses, but not the fourth one. And we have to be careful about the three responses we pass in. We can't pass all three voting for the, the candidate because then they'll just call the election because they have a majority. We need to have one of them, at least one of them vote no of the three that respond back. So that I'll have two votes and be waiting for a third vote. I mean, uh, two votes for, one vote against, and waiting for that fourth vote to try to get a majority. So that'll be part of the setup, actually. Is we'll send... Actually, we don't even need to loop. We'll... No, I'll, I'll, I'll still loop. But what I'll do here is... Uh, let's just make it a case, a switch statement. Switch config, uh, instance. I do have a case of the Mondays. All right, so let's have two vote against. Or should two be the slow voter? Actually, I, I'm kind of thinking... Yeah, two will be the slow voter. So the only ones that will vote will be six, seven, and eight, or 11. So yeah, six, seven, and 11. If it's 11, they'll vote against. If it's uh, six and seven, they'll vote for. All right. Actually, I'm wondering if that should have been a one. I'll, I think I'll get back to that in a bit. Anyway, that's the setup. So now we, we're going to advance the time one RPC interval 
and wait for one more. We should expect one more message to be sent. Right? So advance an RPC. Actually, I can just use the number I put in there. RPC timeout. I, could, I should have used the other number there too. I should use this max selection timeout here. And then we, will, we, really, we really only want to see that it sends one message. So was it just one one worker thread loop? Yeah. Okay. So we advance it and then we wait exactly one more loop. And then we should expect only one message one more message to be sent. I should probably clear the messages, right? like messages yeah messages sent we need to clear it though so this will be one additional message sent and then we can put in our expectations here so we expect that it retransmits just to uh oh i had that wrong didn't i oh yeah it, it was right it's gonna send it to two Receiver, yes. And I guess it's it's a good thing to uh, check the message itself. It's a request vote and... self instance number is the is the candidate and then the term is 1 all oh, that's in the asserts okay cool so this this is going to require some coding Oh yeah, they won't build because they renamed stuff and added that one thing, right? This became election. Let's add the new one. RPC. Defaulted to one-tenth of the minimum election timeout. It, the one problem I might have is that it's smaller than the worker loops polling period, which means I probably need to remove the polling and have it actually wait on messages to be arrived. Wait on messages to be arrived with a, a shorter timeout. Yeah, I'm just thinking ahead to what I'm going to have to do. Instead of polling, we'll actually do, do uh, waiting on a condition, I think. Okay, so... This is the maximum amount of time to wait for a response to an RPC request before retransmitting the request. All right, and in the code, in the code, we'll have the same problem with the timeouts. You can see also this that we should have the election time up be randomly distributed. It's not doing that right now. It's only doing up to the minimum. So we'll have to write a unit test to fix that. All right. Hopefully that builds, but now we'll fail. It failed big time. It crashed. Oh, because, of the, yeah, I need to make an assert instead of an expect there.
Let's make an assert that it's greater than or equal to, but... But expect it to be one. So it'll, if it's two, it'll continue going with a fail that there's more than one message sent. What did I do wrong here? Oh, did I not build it? I did build it, so what's going on here? Oh, right, these have to be reversed. Actually, because of that... Oh, no. I don't really like the fact that for equal, not equal, it's, if you look, hover over this, Okay, I guess they don't show it, but usually it's expected and actual. Expected is first actual, but for greater than greater than or equal to, it's supposed to be like left hand side, right hand side of a greater than or equal to. It's backwards, in other words. Right, expected it to be greater than or equal to. It's actually zero. I don't really like this, but that aspect of G test. Tell you the truth. So yeah, it's not it's not retransmitting. That's actually what I should have expected. So we're gonna have to change this. We'll have to wait for and the amount of. Well, let me think about this. A much shorter period of time. <laughs> um. Actually, the RPC interval is a good interval to, to use rather than hard coding this, right? So we'll stop hard coding this. We will wait for, let's actually compute it here in milliseconds. So actually, does chronoseconds and milliseconds take floats? I don't remember. Pulling up my manual. <clears throat> Not helping me out here. Chrono. Hmm. Seconds. So it's leading me to this time of day thing, which I don't like. Duration, right? Arithmetic type. Signed integer type, so it can't be a floating point. All right. Well, we'll have to we'll have to like round to the nearest integer in milliseconds. I think that's what we'll do. So int or const auto RPC timeout milliseconds equals shared config RPC timeout times one thousand, and then I'm just going to truncate it actually. So convert it to int by truncation. Then I'll wait for that amount of time. Oh, wait a minute. I just can't. I can't just put a number in there, can I? It's got to be standard chrono milliseconds to give the units. I think if you don't put the units, it like uses um, seconds or something. And I'm gonna pretty this up a little bit. Okay, so each loop, we're starting an election, if we need to, but also we should check to see if there are any requests that are outstanding. So, how would I do this? Right, we'll do... 
I actually kind of only want to sample the current time once. What I'm worried about is we start an election and we sample the time again, and it might have, because we got a hiccup in the, um, like the thread wasn't able to run for a, a long time. It might actually resend the RPC again right away, and I don't want that. So I'm going to change this to, we're going to sample the, the uh, I'm only saying half sentences, sorry about that. I'm going to do the sampling of the time outside of this get time since, and I'm going to just pass it in. That's what I'm going to do. So we'll say now. We'll pass in now here. This is the current time according to the timekeeper. Right. So let's just make a function that we've again passed now to do retransmissions. And also the start election will need it now because we'll need to record the time the election the uh, RPC message was sent. Start election, we'll fix that up first. And do retransmissions. Double now. Double down on now. Double down now. Okay, this method retransmits RPC messages or any, any RPC messages for which no response has yet been received. So in general, what does that entail? We will need to hold the mutex when we do this. We're going to loop through instances and skip ourselves. And if it's not us, we'll say something like if instance dot or is it arrow oh these are instance numbers okay this isn't good we don't i need to have a record for each instance not just an instance number okay we have a waiting votes from maybe i just need to i need to um enhance this a little bit zoom enhance Yeah, I think that's what we want, what we need to do. So we need to change this to waiting votes from into like we'll have a structure and we'll have a map of we'll have a map of uh, instance numbers to structures. I think the so struct instance info. Okay, and this holds information about. Uh, information that one server holds about another. And right now we'll just have that awaiting, uh, awaiting vote. So I can just copy the, copy that out. This comment, copy that election, uh, that uh, comment out and put it here. This indicates whether or not we're still awaiting a request vote from a request vote response from this instance. Okay, now I'll put instance info here and turn it into a map. And we'll call it instance instances, maybe? And we'll change this to be, you know, this holds information about the other servers. This server knows or tracks about other servers. There we go. And then it wants me to include map, I think.
We don't use set anymore, so I can remove that include. All right. So I'm just going to fix up these other places here. So we can't just clear this. We have to go through all the instances and clear the flag because we don't want to wipe out all the, in all the information we know about instances. So or auto reference. Let me think about this. Yeah. I think this is the way, the way to do it. Then instance second dot awaiting vote is false. Make it a reference so that we're not just making a copy of the key and value from the map. We're actually getting into the key and value. I think that's the right way to do it. So we'll call this instance number. And then here we will do auto instance equals. Actually, I, hmm. I've been trying to get into the habit of it's, if it's an iterator or a pair reference into a map, I use entry. And then this is going to be just the actual value. So it's shared instances index instance number. And then I can say... Um, instance dot awaiting vote true. And this is instance number. Okay, where else? Down here. Right, so same thing. Here. Sender instance number. Sample. And then it's now false. Cool. I want to make sure that builds at least. I didn't break anything. Interesting. The exe wasn't found. Hmm. Full link was needed for some reason. Okay, we didn't break anything. We just haven't fixed this code yet completely. Right, getting there. So now, the only thing we actually we'll wait for is if we're awaiting a vote. So we can we can just cheese it and just put that directly in. We'll just have to change it later. So it'll be like this. Oh, wait a minute. No, we need to we need to do something with the time, which means I need to have here double um rec uh last last request sent time Last request sent. Initialize it to something sane. Say, this is the time, according to the timekeeper, that a re request was last sent to the, to the instance. Basically, I'm going to be changing that to be like a waiting response. And then we'll have to have like hold on to the, to the actual request so that we can just resend it. Actually, I'll be doing that very soon, now that I think about it. So when we send it, we'll have to record the time. Where is this part where we send? Probably from here, right? Right here, we send. Whoops. Right, so we can't just send it. The send might be from different places. And I'll want to include the now. So, well, not in that. So I really want to just refactor this out. Send message. And then these two parameters with an extra one now. And then this the send message is going to just do that for now. <laughs> Where do we put it? Put it anywhere. How about here? It's going to do that for now. And it needs the message. So shared pointer message. Unsigned int instance number. And then we want the now. So document it. This method sends the given message to the 
instance with the given unique identifier. This is the message to send. Instance number is the unique identifier of the recipient of the message. And then now, this is the time, the current time. The timekeeper. So in addition to doing that send, we're also going to get the instance is shared, instances, index, instance number, and then we're going to record the time it was last sent. Right? Then, the retransmit. Where did I put it? Two retransmissions. Okay, so we don't we're not we don't need to loop through that. We will do this instance entry shared instances. Right? Now we don't have to do this. Because we shouldn't be putting ourselves into that into that map in the first place. All we need to do here is say if awaiting no instance entry dot second dot awaiting boat, which we're gonna change in a little bit when we are sending different kinds of messages. If, right. And now minus instance entry dot second dot time is greater than or equal to shared config RPC timeout. Then we got to retransmit. So it's send message again. And here we need to have the message in that entry. So instance entry that second dot last request. And then the instance number, which is instance entry dot first. And then now, which is now. Which means I need to have the send message has to, have, has to actually have, I mean, uh, the instance entry has to have a last request in it. Any last requests instance? A shared pointer message last request. This is this is the last request sent to the instance. And that's a raft message. It's really quiet in chat. No messages for 34 minutes. There's pluses and minuses for uh, quiet chat. I get, I get more work done, plus. Minus is I'm not getting any feedback. I'm not sure what I like better. I guess it depends on the day. Well, let's see if this works. This ought to retransmit it now. Nope. I got an exception. Nice. Probably because I didn't store the last request. Send message. Needs to actually store that. Instance last request is message. That was probably it. Look at that. Don't you love it? We can also do things like make sure it doesn't retransmit right away. So modifying this test slightly, we can say server does not retransmit too frequently or too quickly. So we modify this slightly so that we advance it to just shy of one RPC interval. And we will just expect it to be zero. If it's not zero, this will print out the size. Just shy of the, of the timeout. Cool. And then I can, I can totally, um, Sabotage it that way. 
just a sanity check. Cool. Now, um, I kind of feel like going the other way. It should retransmit twice if we go two intervals, right? Server. Retran uh, re server regular trans re regular retransmissions. As in we're not gonna check the content. We'll just check the size so that here's the setup and then we already tested that after one we get one, so we'll do times two minus some short amount. So it's going to be a multi stage act, actually. Because I, I want it to be one at that point and advance the time just ever so slightly. I was I would do one, but there's a chance that the floating point error could make it not exactly line up correctly. So add two, uh, two thousand two milliseconds, and we should expect two, right? And is should I just carry it on further? So we go this much more. Minus three to to carry us back to this back to the boundary and then plus four, right? Spec three. And I'm not gonna well actually we could. We could just assert that all those messages are retransmitting the same thing. So where's our retransmit code here? Yes. I'll just do that for extra safety here. So for const auto message sent in messages sent, do the thing. What did I do wrong there? Sent, not send. Yeah, there we go. So basically checking all the, all three of them that they're retransmissions. Hey, Furkov, how do you like the Google Test Framework? I really like it because it works on every platform that I use this on. So it'll work on Linux and Mac too. And I've been trying to move away from Visual Studio as much as I can because I can't run that on Linux. Visual Studio Code, on the other hand, does, which you'll see in this command. I've been trying to move to VS Code and then tools that are cross-platform like Google Test because I want to be able to move to Linux and Mac if I, if I need to. I haven't actually tried the Visual Studio one, and because it's Windows only, I'm kind of hesitant to try it out because I wouldn't get that much... Uh, Feedback. Oh, there's another message I missed. Steve Ronix. Hi, you're a student in informatics. Like to be a security expert. Would you like? I would like to hear your opinion on one of your projects. Multi-threaded brute forcer in C. That's actually. I, it sounds really interesting. I, I I tried to write one of those years ago. To what was it to do? Yeah, it was it was to test another network application. It would just no. Maybe it was to test a machine. It was start a whole bunch of threads and have all those threads try to just do all sorts of crazy stuff to crash the machine. So that, that would be cool. By the way, I have a Discord. I mean, there's no one... There's not a whole lot of people there yet because I'm just a, a, new, a relatively new streamer. But you're welcome to go on there if you, if you have some uh, stories to share or questions to ask. But yeah, if, if, you want, if you'd like to elaborate on that brute force or project and you're still here, then feel free to, to chat about it. Yeah, and I sh I'll say this every stream until I get good. Um, 
I'm not very good right now at making sure that I see, I'm looking right there at my chat window. And I'm trying to get good so that your messages don't get uh, ignored because I just simply didn't see you type them. If, if, you, if, you get, if you're getting frustrated that I'm not responding, feel free to tag me in the message, you know, at my name and then it, it makes a little audio sound that I hear. Okay, so the retransmissions, I screwed up a little bit. So we're getting two instead of one on 445 here. No, we expected two and got one. Basically, every thread takes a piece of a word list and sends synchronous. That's is that. I hope it's ethical hacking. It almost sounds like uh, like you're trying to. Uh, I guess you're you're talking about being a security expert. Yeah. So that sounds awesome. But use your powers for good only, please. Yeah, those things are useful to uh, test on your own site to make sure that uh, you. Um, have put this proper security on your site. Okay, I am. It's failing. Expected two and only got one. I might have done this calculation wrong. It actually did catch up eventually, right? Four fifty one. It actually got a, a second one, but it took a while. So yeah, just shy of the second RPC timeout, we do expect one, and that ha that did work. But then we advanced it past two times the RPC timeout, and it didn't work. Hmm. What's this RPC timeout sent to? Maybe it's just too small. No? It's an order of magnitude more than these increments. I don't know. Maybe my math is wrong. It's one of those days where I could I could totally be doing something stupid in, in my math here and, not ju and just not seeing it. Here, it's failing. We're, we are waiting one loop. Just to be extra safe, we'll make sure it runs two loops each time. Just a guess. If this fixes it, then it's a race. No, it's not a race. Not a race. Okay, let's let's look and see what it might have been. So in this worker thread, every loop it does retransmissions, right? Every loop, it'll be resampling the timekeeper's time, which is what we're what 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 we're incrementing here. It's gonna while holding the mute text, it will right if the time advanced enough, we send and send updates the time right time yeah. Well, shoot, I don't know what's going on. Okay, maybe we'll step through this, but we have to be very careful because it's sensitive to runtime issues. Like, this thing only waits one loop. Do I have this set up to run? I do. Let's just go. Okay. The moment I run this line, the other thread could wake up and do its thing. So before I go any further in the code, I need to go to the other thread. Not the main thread. It's probably this one. Yes. Here it is. It's waiting to run from there. So I'll put the breakpoint here and just tell it, it to go from there. So. Now is point two two one. Is that what I expect? Current 
current time. Right, so we went to point 0.2, and then plus, yeah, point oh two is two RPC intervals. Yeah, so it should be beyond. Okay, so we're, what what's going on here? Yeah, it's, it shouldn't start a new election. Let's see what retransmissions does. Time it was last sent is point two one nine. So that should be point oh two. So that it should go in here and send it again. It didn't. Why is that? I'm just going to peek in and look at instances. Right, here's the one we're awaiting a vote for. Am I doing my math wrong? 0 0.221 minus 0 0.219 should be 0 0.02. And that should be greater than or equal to 0 0.01. So why didn't it go into this loop? Oh, you know what? It could be iterating in a different order. I should really step through all of these. Yeah, it didn't go into any of them. I don't get it. Let's try again. Uh, I don't want that right away. Actually, can I keep that but just turn off the check mark? Let's see what happens. Yeah, that'll work. So wait till it gets to that test, then turn that on, then go. All right. And then. Actually, I could have just narrowed it down, couldn't I? And put this breakpoint here. All right. Instance entry, right, two. We are awaiting the vote. Maybe I should do a watch since I don't trust my own math. Now minus instance entry dot second dot time last request sent is point oh oh two with some error. And then Shared configuration RPC timeout. Oh, hold on. Yeah, my math is wrong. I was being dumb. Yep. I see what I did. It sent it it sent it too close to the other timeout interval. Hey there, said who? How's it going? Yeah, so the way I'm doing this, it's really time sensitive. But I, I'm pretty sure I know what it is, so Because we don't let we don't even wait for the worker thread to run and we're we're not advancing the time in small enough increments, it actually sends the first retransmission at that time, which is very late. So what we should do is advance to exactly one, expect it to retransmit. Actually, let's instead of doing plus equal, we'll be very spit. We'll be very exact about it. Let's 
So it should retransmit at that point. But we want to do one more round where it doesn't move. So plus or times two minus some very small amount. Then set it to exactly that and it should retransmit a second time. Then times three minus that and then times three. That's that'll that'll be better. Almost. Four forty eight it's failing at. Interesting. I'm I'm curious why, because it, it should have retransmitted there. So that should be precisely at the next retransmission. It could be it could be floating point error. Let me let me do this. It's just that I have to now increase it a bit each time to account for that error. Yeah, that's what it is. I think it was floating point error. How am I doing today? I'm not doing that great, actually. It's it's must be because it's Monday. You try to make a UI and it breaks your head. UIs hurt my head too. They're less logical and more trying to deal with what the what a human would do with your user interface. I actually like backend stuff a little bit more, I think, because you're not having to deal with the user directly. It's more with the logic between pieces of your own program. Yeah. Oh, I'm just sore for some reason. And I... I'm getting old, man, getting old. Yeah, I think it's just Monday. Monday, and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to kick the caffeine habit, so I'm like on one cup of just light caffeine tea, and maybe that's... Maybe it's withdrawals. I'm trying to get off of caffeine and just um, trying to eat better. Question of who owns what? Yeah, who owns what in that UI? You mean like who own like which developer owns what in the code, or what uh, component owns what object? Okay, I think we've thoroughly th crushed this one. That the trend we we're, we get regular retransmissions. Like for example, you have a window and there's three buttons in the corner. Yeah. Like, uh, oh, I, see, it's one of those days. I type it and I type it a second time. Right, I did rename those, and because we added another timeout. Yeah, this is all about supporting retransmission, wasn't it? Yes, support retransmission. Server. Add request retransmissions. If responses, like well, I think that's enough. Add request retransmissions. Is the window responsible for handling input or for them, or treat them as separate entities? Yeah. It it can be maddening. Okay, moving on. What's the next use case I want to do? Election timeout should be randomly distributed. Okay, this is going to be fun. I also have these test cases that we can get to. Yeah, well, okay, these are more fun ones later, but let's do the let's do the the randomness che check. I think what I want to do is take the check I had for that a uh, election is started, and uh, we'll have it run it many times and just measure the point it actually timed out at, and then we'll just make sure that it looks somewhat of a normal, not a normal, an even distribution, right? Just to make sure that it's doing a random. 
a random distribution of timeout. So this one right here. This is proper. We should rename this to be started after max. Election always started. Oops, it jumped. Within maximum timeout interval, right? That's what we really did. And let me uh, do this right. Instead of having this number in there hard-coded, I'll put that in there. And that's minimum minus some amount, right? Oh, and there's that, I see there's a problem here. We didn't do the one wait before we set the time, so we didn't allow the server's worker thread to sample the initial time, so we had to do that. Let me just double check that that didn't break. Cool. Didn't break. So now that's that's the uh, minimum that we expect is that it, it it always starts within the maximum. It's actually that it also that it doesn't start before the minimum, right? Let's break this test up. We're gonna break the test up. So election never starts. before minimum time interval, right? That's a good thing to check. So that was the first half right here. We will just put that to there, right? So we advance to just before the minimum timeout. We let it run to do one last check to make sure we're not racing it. And it should not send anything. So this one doesn't have to do that anymore. Like that, right? And really, uh, this can be moved to the arrange. This can be moved to the arrange. That's a little bit cleaner there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna take this and use uh, make a copy of it, and we'll say election starts after random interval between minimum and maximum. So here we're going to run it a lot of times. So I need a way to have it reset. That's the problem. How are we going to have it reset? I suppose I could just make a back door called reset. Why not, right? Okay, so... We need to do this a lot of times. I don't know, a thousand? So each time, we'll reset, which we don't have a reset yet. But reset, and then we'll, 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 we need to step through. So we go, we let it run once. We go to right, I guess right at the minimum. And then let's have it step through at, inter, at increments to go to the maximum. So while mock time keeper current time is less than less than or equal to yeah because it's inclusive those two the minimum maximum inclusive and then we'll be advancing some small interval each time so each time we're going to let it run one loop and then we're going to check if Messages receive uh, messages sent. Not empty. Then we're going to conclude that it started an election. All the other tests are going to support that checking, so we don't have to repeat it here. So we'll simply record the time at which it it reset, and let's make that a 
How are we going to do this? I guess what we can do is we can have bins, and then we can just count the number that fall in certain bins, and that we can actually have the size of this interval. So, right, const auto bin interval equals that, and then we can just advance the bin interval, and then we'll have a vector of counts bins and this will it's going to be a little tricky the size has to be well no hold on it doesn't have to be i can keep a counter here and then i can resize resize yeah so we can just we can just keep it empty i need to have sort of a counter here Why don't I just make this a for loop? I don't know. For size t, j equals zero. And here's the clause for continuing. And then it's plus plus j and this at the same time. And I can get rid of that and this. So if this happens, then we've it's timed out and started an election. So I will do bins dot no if bins dot size is less than or equal to J. Because we don't want to shorten the number of bins. We want to resize up to but not less than. We want to resize up to the point where it timed out, unless it's unless it's more plus one, right? And then we simply add one to the count there. The trick is how do I check if it's normal? I guess what I do is I I'll find the minimum and maximum of the counts in the bins and make sure that they're Maximum minus minimum is no greater than some threshold. This might take some trial and error. Because I'm not a mathematician, I don't know what a regular distribution over a thousand intervals. I don't know what the error I, to, I should expect. Oh yeah, also when this happens, we want to break. And then we don't need this expectation. And we're not going to have... Well, we'll have an assert looking at the bins, right? So it'll be... smallest bin and largest l smallest bin we need to initialize to something right some large number get to use one of one of the more obscure headers limits standard limits numeric limits of size t max and then largest bin zero. I could I could be a a mathemat mathematical purist and say min, but it's gonna be zero. And then we're gonna say for auto bin in bins if well smallest bin and if we, we use algorithm It's the minimum of the smallest bin and then the current bin. Largest is the maximum. And then we'll just have an expectation that the largest minus the smallest is greater than or equal to something, is less than or equal to something, right? What's the largest spread? Let's just guess, it's gonna be 10. And we'll hopefully see it fail. Oh, I need to implement reset though. Reset. This is going to be a backdoor, so reset. This method puts the server back into the state it was in when first mobilized. 
Uh, okay, there we go. Okay, I'm doing okay on time, right? It's an hour and a half. I, I'll go another hour and 30 minutes. But then I gotta, I gotta stop by 145 Pacific. Expecting a call, so I don't want to. I don't want to get the phone call while I'm still streaming because that would be really disruptive. Okay, reset. Get the lock. And I think all we need to do is go in and zero everything out, right, from the shared state. Actually, we, we need to tell the um, worker thread to reset its um, initial time. Where do I use this? Interesting. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I can reset, right? Yeah, so we can simply call that here. So, update. Actually, maybe we should stop and start the worker thread again. Yeah, I kind of feel like doing that. So that would be a demobilize, mobilize. Oh, wait a minute, but we can't reuse stop worker. Ooh, that's, an, that's a problem. Let me think about that. I need to take a, um, just a one minute break. Well, yeah, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I don't think I actually need a mobilize, demobilize, do I? Oh, no, I do. Yes, I do. Or no, do I? I don't, yeah, I don't, okay. I don't need to have this reset because I can simply mo demobilize and mobilize again. I just have to fix the code in um, mobilize. Because we need to, we can't, once we set a promise here, we can't set it again. But what I can do is this equals standard promise. I think I can do that. So we can reuse it. Let me guarantee or verify I can do that. Yeah, the other thing is we don't want to call, we want to prevent mobilize from being called twice. I should probably just have a unit test for that, shouldn't I? Near the top, sort of a dummy test. Like, should, uh, mobilize twice. Yeah. 
mobilize twice does not crash. <laughs> So, server mobilize and then do it in the arrange and just make sure it doesn't crash. So, right now it'll crash. Yeah, so to make it not crash. Actually, there was something said so gtest completely crashes and we we don't we don't actually run the other tests and we don't get a nice summary. But there, I thought there was something that we could do to to tell gtest that we might crash. Hey, they are three D extended. I'm doing so so. I'm actually kind of feeling a little sick, but other than that, I'm good. I think I I'm, I really need to watch my diet a bit, and I haven't been doing that, so my stomach is uh in revolt today. But I'm doing uh, work-wise here, doing really good. We're working on completing the election process for our server cluster. So I wanted to look up Google test. They had something called a death test. But I wanted an inverse death test. That something does not crash. Actually, I should just look up reverse or inverse death test. Here we go. Uh, death. Here we go. I want an assert not death. Do they not have that? Thanks, th 3D Extended. The, the latest thing is... Um, Guessing that, that, uh, yeah, that I'm, uh, I got some kind of food allergy going on. Just have to figure out what it is and then stop eating that, right? Simple enough. Yeah, so they have expect or assert death, but they don't have expect or assert not death. At least not that I don't, not that I see. Normal exit. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I think we'll just keep that in there. Does not crash, and we'll just make it not crash. How about that? So to make it not crash, I need to make sure that it's not already set. So if info worker joinable, then return, right? That should fix that. Cool. So this... Yeah, that's not quite ready to run. Because that test, well, what was it on? That one assumes we can do that and then everything is reset, but it's not quite. Actually, what I want to do is set this to zero every loop this is not death equals assert true well the problem is when it does crash it google test isn't catching the crash and um, continuing and running all the other tests so it, it gives me an incomplete test run which I guess is okay, because if it ever happens, I'd be like, okay, the, the, I just assume everything is completely screwed up, and then I know what crashed it. It's the last thing that ran, right? But it would be nice if it said, oh, it failed because it crashed. But it, it's not smart enough to do it there. Back again. Welcome back, Ken Comanix. All right. Let me think about this. So this will make sure that when it when the server does come back up, it'll resample the time which we will allow it to do there. Okay, I just need to make sure that mobilize before it starts the worker. It's got to clear all the things. So what are the things that we need to clear? All the things in the shared state, right? Instances, we got to clear that. 
What else? His leader. Reset that. Time of last leader message. Reset that. Although, actually, maybe we don't need to do that, because that's the first thing that the thread does, is, is set that. Votes for us. Zero. And... That's it, right? I might... Let's see. I might have to reduce the number of loops that this does. Since I don't have no idea what it's doing, let me have it print something every loop. Or now, let's just reduce it to one loop. Okay. Actually, that will pass because there will only be one bin, and so it'll be the difference between zero and that. Well, hold on. Actually, I'm curious what it is. What if we duplicate this and inverse logic, so one of them will always fail? Actual is zero. Oh, um, actually, is that right? Oh, because it's always, right now it's, it's screwed up because it'll always be one bin, right? Actually, shouldn't it have run at least once? There are a reason to use doubles for time measurements. Uh, mostly because I want it to be in the units of seconds, but I don't want to lose the precision down to milliseconds. And so I want I want to I want it to be able to run for a very long time and not lose millisecond precision. That's really the the right answer. The alternative would be to hold it in two different integers, I guess, seconds and milliseconds. But then that would be a little bit clumsier. But I'm I, I'm not I'm not very invested in it. I'd be willing to consider an alternative. I have gotten bitten in the past where I use uh, a floating point variable to track time, and then it's okay until I let it run for more than two or three days, and I, I lose precision very badly. I think that was when I was using float, though. I think my reasoning was double should have enough digits of precision to go for many years. Okay, let me think about this. What happens if we run it 10 times? I don't think it's doing this computation correctly. Let's put a little breakpoint in here and we'll look at the bins. Bins. Only one bin? Actually, we we expect a certain number of bins, don't we? Maybe I need to, um, yeah. I need to initialize the size so that we allow there to be zero bins, or bins with zero in them up to the expected number. So that'll be... If I do it right, I don't need this resize junk. I'm, I'm just worried about being off by one. Although I guess I could just add one. So the number of bins that we expect will be equal to... Maximum minus the minimum uh, divided by the bin interval, right? And then possibly plus one, just to be safe. From a graphic standpoint, is it useful to use ticks since that is what's exposed by most frameworks? I suppose so, yeah. This is on the server side, so I don't have... well. I'm a very new game dev, so it could be that I'm just being totally naive about it. I, I'm just not thinking in ticks right now. I'm just thinking in floating point time. So you might have the insight that I'll realize maybe a month from now, like Kenkomet or 3D Extended was right. I should have, from the start, used ticks. You're making me want to put in a note to myself to think about this. Let me do that. Let me do this. I'm going to put a note here to think 
think about how time is measured in the shit server. Ticks versus floating point time. So I need to, th I'll, I'll meditate about that. And what is it not like about this? Probably be, probably that I didn't cat, I didn't truncate it to a size. Right? Yeah, okay, now let me see what it does. Actually, we're gonna run the debugger. Debug run. So how many bins? Okay, we have 101 bins, right? So, and they're, and, and they're all, so it's, not, it's gonna fail the test now, right? Because it's gonna be way out of distribution. I want it to fail in a certain way. Yeah, it's, uh, Oh, greater than 10? No, it should be less than. Oh, I had it inverse, that's why. Yeah. I want to get a, a balance between getting seeing a nice random distribution and making the test take too long to run. Because right now, how long is this going to take to run? Three seconds? I guess it's not too bad. So right now, it's totally not random. It's 100 entries in one bin and we're only allowing a difference of 10. Okay, so it's actually expected. I guess I could increase the bin interval a little bit and then that'll run, make it run faster, right? That's probably okay. That's an order of magnitude less than the timeout variance. It's still taking a long time to run. Huh. Interesting. Why is it taking the same amount of time when the bin interval is larger? Oh, thanks for following, Viking Coder. I'm trying to figure out right now why this the test I'm running takes the same amount of time even, even if I only do one-tenth the bins. Still taking three seconds. So what that means? Hmm, that means this loop isn't what's causing it to take so long. It's these other parts. I guess that means I can put the bin interval back down, back more fine grained. I need to think about what's taking so long. It might be that to join the worker thread here is taking enough time that we, when we do it a hundred times, it, it just adds up. The three seconds. That's probably what it is. I'll have to live with that. At least for now. Okay. So, the test should be good. Now we just need to make it actually pick a random election timeout, right? So I think we'll do that when we first um, when we first start in the worker thread. For now. We'll have, we'll have to move it into a method later because we want to rerun it every time the uh actually let's put it, let's put it into a method right now what am i making what am how are I measuring the intervals what is ninja got a lot of questions i'll try to answer them though so what am i making i'm making my own game and i this is the first time i've ever tried to make a multiplayer online game and i'm pretty new streaming too so apologies for uh, rough edges around my stream but uh, there's a one note notebook that's kind of open you can learn more about it and the, I just started making the game it's, it's not playable yet but the idea is that your client will be a web browser so it'll be like JavaScript probably a retro 2D pixel art kind of game and then on the server side to make it multiplayer and make it uh, fault tolerant and all of that, we're going to have a cluster of servers. And I'm just saying those up now. I'm working on getting the servers to talk to each other and achieve what's called co a coherence. Right? No, consensus. I get this, those con words screwed up. Consensus. So all the servers agree on what the game state is. And then they have to elect a leader 
which is the one that clients connect to. I actually need to remove these. Initially, I thought that the client could talk to any server, but really, it really only should be talking to the leader. But yeah, we're, we're just working on that. And how am I measuring time intervals? Uh, actually, I should talk about what I, how I program. I try to use test-driven development. So when right now the component I'm working on is the coordinator, essentially, it's, it's, it's going to use the raft consensus algorithm. So I haven't drawn it here, but imagine a box here for raft. And that's the reusable part that I'm putting on GitHub. And my coordinator is going to use that to, yeah, to, uh, to get the curve cluster going. But since I'm, I want to focus on one box at a time in my uh, unit testing, which is kind of core to test-driven development, the old, when I'm testing the coordinator, there is no real web gate. There's no reconciler. There's not even the concept of real time, really. So everything is mocked around the, co around the coordinator or the raft component, and that includes time. So there's an object that's given to every unit of the server in the real integration, it'll be a real timekeeper that measures real time. But when we're unit testing things, it's a fake timekeeper. And I strictly control the current time on the clock so that in our tests, we can set precise times that when we allow the uh, server to run its worker th loop once, it'll pick up that time and, and we can then check to make sure that the side effects we expect happen at that time actually happen. It's a little bit complicated, though, because you have to make an object that simulates time, and you have to have some way to give it to the thing you're testing. So for me, that's when we set it up in the fixture, I set the timekeeper there. And because standard threads use real time and not a simulated time, I do kind of cheesy things like the actual loop has to wait on a, a, it has to wait in real time, but every time we wake up, we sample the actual timekeeper. So the loop can run even if the clock isn't running. So it's it's a bit it's a bit com complicated, but the whole goal is to I completely isolate the thing I'm testing and to simulate the whole universe around it so that um, we can focus in on use cases for single components. And then if there's any kind of bug, we can isolate it to the component that contains the uh, the root cause of the bug. So what that, what did I miss? All the things in VS. So I'm using VS Code, which um, I don't know if everyone knows that it's it's the cross-platform editor-only version of Visual Studio, so to speak. I'm trying to use this because I want to be able to move to Linux and Mac. Sometimes there are features I find that aren't in VS Code, and I have to fall back to Visual Studio, uh, where I'm most comfortable doing debugging. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff either in VS Code now or through the extensions. If you're curious about that, the main extensions I use are those ones. So C, C++, CMake tools because I use CMake. And then you'll also see these pop-ups for Git Lens. I don't really use it too much, but uh, that explains what these things are. Showing me like what commit was the last one that touched a certain line. So yeah. Right, to make this, so instead of using the minimum election, we have to use some variable that we, that we change every interval. We'll call it election time, current election timeout. And let's place it here. Uh, let's put it, I feel like putting it here. And just, I like to initialize all plain values, even even if they get reinitialized later, like this one does. You don't actually use IDs for personal work. Android Studio, actually, I kind of like Android Studio, in that it's got really good version control interface. It's the best one I found. C plus plus, yeah. This is portable to Linux. In fact, yesterday I ran this on my Linux box to make sure it both builds, passes all the tests, and runs. So 
As much as possible, I try to shove differences between OSs into this library I call System Abstractions, and that's part of my GitHub. By the way, if you want to look at any of my code, all the reusable components are in my GitHub. You won't find my game server because I'm keeping that private for now, but all the all the components that I think would be potentially useful for other people I put on GitHub, and that includes this System Abstractions, which is kind of a... It's my messiest component, but then again, it's got to have, like variations for Linux, Mac, and then the parts that are common between Linux and Mac, which is POSIX, and then Win32. Win it's useful yet messy. Yeah, MS tends to use some of their own expressions, so I don't. I try to avoid that because then it, it forces me to have an alternative for Linux or Mac anyway. So I try to pick the things from the standard C, C++ library that are not MS extensions much as I can. A lot of the time I'll accidentally use it and then I'll discover the next time I try to build on Linux it'll say what the heck are you trying to do? And I'll be like oh I guess that was a Microsoft extension that I used. This is the time, actually it's the same, no but hold on, this is not a, not a time. This is the amount of time to the maximum amount of time. Well, thanks for following Grazer59 this is the maximum amount of time to wait between messages from the cluster leader before calling a new election. So if you're curious about the algorithm I'm working on, the today command has a link to my notebook page, which is right here, and that has links to the raft consensus algorithm. So things like what is a leader and what is an election and all that stuff, what is a request vote, it, they're all either on this site or on the uh, white paper that is linked to from that site. So current election timeout. So this is going to break everything because we don't set that everywhere. The trick is where do we set it? We have to set it whenever we receive a message from a leader, which we don't handle yet. And we also need to set it whenever we start a new election and when we start up from the very first. So I think what I'll do is I'll make a function that we call, actually, time of last leader message. Here's a great place to put it, isn't, isn't it? It samples the current time from the timekeeper and stores. Actually, it's going to do more than that. This method is called whenever a message, well, whenever a message is received when they cluster leader or when the server starts an election or or starts up initially right it samples the current time from the type here stores unless it also it also picks a new election timeout. So that's what we're going to do. So shared ele current election timeout. And here I want to use something nifty from the standard C++ library that I learned about. The problem is I don't remember the name because it's a really funky name. So I'm going to have to Google search it. C++11 uh, random... Is like Mercene Twister. I'm gonna hor horribly misspell it. MT nineteen nine thirty seven. That's it. I want to use that because that gives you a nice normal distribution. And I'm pretty sure I used it already. So I just want to find out where I used it. I didn't use it here. Shoot. I guess I used it in the uh, in the other project I was working on. 20 something streams ago. So let me open a new window and search through that. At around stream 70, I kind of switched from doing, uh, making my own web server to actually trying to make a game out of it. And I switched solutions. So there's some stuff from those older streams here that aren't in the newer. Pretty sure it was here. Just have to find it. While it's searching, let me see if I can find it myself. I think it was in the chatbot that I was making at the time. Nope. 
find it yet. Oh, there it is. There we go. So we make a generator, right? We make a generator. Where should we put this generator? I guess we just put it in our shared properties. Does it be, need, need to be protected by the mutex? I guess so. And what do I need to include to get this? Random? Okay. Probably. Now this is a standard C++ Mersine Twister, right? Mersine Twister uh, pseudo random number generator uh, used to pick election timeouts. Right? Okay, so we'll call it RNG. So how do I use this in that other project and a generator? Right, uniform real distribution. That was the that was the killer. And I need to remember to seed it too. Let's seed it in mobilize, right? Let's seed it there. The time is from time. You just want to, the seed has just have to be something that's not the same every time you run. So time is nice in that it gives you a different, it's the number of seconds since some time. I think it was January 1st, 1970. So it's always, as long as we don't run the program twice in the same second, we should get a different number, right? It's not generator. I renamed it to RNG. It took me a minute to figure that out. All right, and the other thing is this. So it's uniform real distribution. And we give it the RNG and we say give give me a number with that's in in the distribution between our minimum oh, where is it? Oh, configuration, right? Configuration minimum and configuration maximum. Maximum, yeah. Shared. Now, the election timeout should be randomized. Let's see if it worked. Uh, this window. Not quite. 99. Okay, there's something weird going on. Do I still have that breakpoint? No. I wanted to look at the actual distribution. 257. That's where it fails. Like right here. Just have it go. We'll look at it ourselves. It takes about three and a half seconds to run, which makes me a bit uncomfortable. Oh, look, it's still picking the minimum. But, oh, no, here's one time it didn't. But most of the time it's the minimum, so I, I screwed up somehow. Oh, you know what? I had just been talking about how we're seeding the random number generator best on time, and I shouldn't run it twice in the same second, but that's exactly what we're doing, because um, we're calling mobilize every every time, every loop. So let me move the seed out. I really, really need to do it once, so let me do it in the constructor. That might help. The so take talk, run three and a half seconds, and give me a nice distribution, please. Oh, hold on. I ate my... Uh, why did I do that? I, I turned off the exception for or the uh, breakpoint for some reason. Take talk. There we go. What does our distribution look like? Still very, still very poor. Ah, huh. something's really wrong. Okay, sometimes like this, I feel like I really 
want some insight into what's going on under the hood, I'm a totally cheat. And whenever that function is called update, I just want to print that out. So let's do exactly that. LF, right? Total cheat. I'll just run it here. I mean, it looks like it's picking random time at intervals. Maybe it's just not using that interval correctly. Oh, wait a minute. No, I am I am advancing it. Okay. My only okay, let's let me print this out so more cheating, more printf statements. Oh yeah, okay, so it's it's timing out right away every time, except for maybe the first time. If it's okay, so it's a reinitialization issue. It's supposed to demobilize, mobilize. It's supposed to reinitialize everything. So I must have missed something. Actually, let me let me just step through that. Uh, debug. And instead of breaking there, let's break here. Actually, peek into the things. All this is okay, right? Shared pointer. Let me just hit go once. Actually, in, yeah. Step into that. Okay, so we cleared the instances, cleared the time, cleared the votes. Let's go to this worker and actually see it run next. So it's going to update this time again, and new timeout. What's this time? Zero. Okay. So the time advances, wait a minute, okay. Right, so I guess I don't, oh, how do we fall out there? How did it fall out of the loop like that? Oh, I know what I did. 
It's just the random, the most random things give me that moment of realization of what I did wrong. Uh, the problem is I did not clear the messages sent at the top of the loop. Like a dummy. I didn't, I didn't do that. So, clear that. It's just um, stopping right away in the second iteration all the way to the hundredth. Okay, so now it ought to run. It's actually pretty slow. Okay, that explains also why when I reduced it from 100 steps to 10 that it didn't speed up. It's because it really didn't run 100. It only ran once. But this is, this is more like it. We're seeing a nice distribution. It's just not fast enough. Let's make the interval one uh, ten times as wide. Let's see. Ooh, it crashed. Nice. How did it crash? Not crashing inside the debugger. It's very slow, though. Okay, it's running a hundred times and we've got a variance of 14. So let me back this off to 20. I guess I can get rid of the printouts now. Oh no, let me keep that in there. I kind of want to. I want to look more at that at those bins. So that would be here. Run. So here we go. Way too slow, though. I need to find out what's holding up each iteration of the loop. Okay, bins. Ah, uh, interesting. So. Nothing at all in the first bin. Right, because the first, it's it's only if it's precisely at the minimum, so that hardly ever happens. And this is precisely at the max, right? So that that's hardly ever going to happen. So really, I shouldn't count the first and last bins. Yeah. Okay. Or actually, a better way would be to start at that plus one bin interval. Right? And yeah, we'll just ignore the last. So to ignore the last would be bins dot resize bins dot size minus one. Just because it's not, it's never going to be a f exactly a full full size bin. Each bin is representing a a, frac uh, a a fraction of time between the minimum between the minimum and maximum timeout interval. So each bin is a little bit of time in which we actually saw a timeout happen. We want the timeouts to be evenly distributed between the minimum and maximum. Oh, what am I doing? I don't want to run it there. I'll run it here with the breakpoint. Cool. So what does our bins look like? And that might be because I have an extra one. because of how I sized it up here.
0.1 divided by 0.01 is going to be 10 plus 1, 11. Yeah, let's just initialize this. Let's remove this plus 1. If it does go over because of rounding, there's still this resize logic in here. So maybe we need to remove two bins. We don't need to look at all the bins, really. Maybe you can sacrifice a few. Hmm. So I can, I can actually, it's actually safe for me to remove that. Last one. Oh, I didn't rebuild it. Or did it build when I hit told it to run? It didn't. Build, please. It went from 10 to 8 instead of uh, 10 to 9. Now run. Hmm, why does this take so long? It shouldn't. Right, so... So the spread is 11. Right? So we don't expect the difference between the, the highest and lowest in the distribution to be more than 20 out of 100. I guess that's okay. If it was like always the minimum or always the maximum or always the middle, it would be a, a, a worst case would be 100. I guess, I guess we'll go with this. There's, a, there's always a chance this test can fail though. It's just I want to make it so that it's very unlikely to fail. Actually, another way would just to be run it until we get something in each bin. Does it really matter if it's a normal distribution? Or un uniform, I mean? When I say normal, I meant to say uniform. I guess repeat until there's nothing... There's at least one in every bin. And then call it... No, I, that might run forever, though. I, this is probably good enough. So why does it take so long? It's going to run up to a thousand iterations, and that's taking... How long? Three seconds? I'm going to remove this printf. More than three seconds now. Ten seconds. So, uh, up, okay. I'm going to guess that that is because we uh, have an initial weight in the worker thread here. What if I kind of cheated and did a do while? Let me see what that, that, that might be enough to make it never wait because Oh, hold on. No, that's not true. I'd, I think I'd have to rework this so that it never really waits. And the only way I could do that uh, would be to, whenever we do this wait, we'd have another method called like wake up the worker thread and tell it to go one loop. Which means that I need to, instead of having it to be asked to stop, it's either asked to stop or 
wake up, which means I really want it to be a conditioned variable. I guess we could do that. Let me check this in though first, because we, we got the test of pass. Now we really want to refactor it so it doesn't take 10 seconds to check it. Okay, actually there were two things I tested. Mobilize twice doesn't crash. Oh, there was multiple things. Never, no election before minimum. Always election. That That's the one that we had before we just renamed it. And then random interval. Okay. So server. More election test cases. And check double mobilize. Okay. Election should never be started before minimum timeout. Election timeouts should be random, should be chosen from uniform distribution between minimum and maximum. And then it should be safe to call mobilize twice in a row. I guess I should also say demobilize should reset the state of the server. And that's indirectly tested by the uh, timeout distribution test. Okay, good to go on that, I think. So I have another 40 minutes left. Let me look at my plan. If I have, if I'm done with the main plan, which I am, I've done all this stuff, then maybe I can spend some time in speeding up the test so it doesn't take 10 seconds to run. Because that's a, that's a drag, literally. Oh, you enjoy watching? I'm so, I'm so happy about that. I'm glad. I'll follow my thought process? You can, you can tell how, how, how screwed up I am in the brain sometimes by the way I ramble. Um, I try to explain what I'm doing because I figure that people just randomly stopping by are going to be like, what the heck is he doing? And I, I watch other streams sometimes, and when they just sit there staring at the screen, it's, I'm like, okay, I'm not getting anything out of this. You make it, the test function names a bit longer. No, you're not going to trick me into that. <laughs> I already got shamed yesterday for making my name so long. Good try, though. Um, yeah, so the idea I had was, instead of waiting for it to be stopped, which, I mean, guarantees we're going to wait at least once every every iteration, I'll I'll rework this so worker asked to stop hmm, let me think about this. If I use a condition variable here, that means I'll need to hold a lock for the for the worker thread. Actually it wouldn't be too bad because I can just unlock it the first thing I do and then relock it at the end. Yeah, let's do that. So that means I need to have a unique lock. Unique lock of the type of shared mutex because we're going to use it to lock that shared mutex. And then what I'll do is I'll unlock it here and then relock it here. This is sort of why I really don't like condition variables because condition variables require you to have a mutex locked, but if I were to keep it locked the whole time, it would lock everyone else out because this worker thread runs for the whole life lifetime of being mobilized. What does auto do? Auto just it gets the type of the variable based on what the other half of the assignment is. So it says get future is going to return a standard future void, right? So it just it's a way to me to prevent having to type this. Some people would argue that they want to see that to, to, to make it clear what the type is. But I don't know. I'm kind of biased the other way. I like to... I'll tell you what, what it is. If I, if I were to change the types of things and I was explicit about the type I'm assigning to, I have to make a lot of changes. 
But using auto everywhere, the code kind of adapts to type changes a little bit easier. But some people don't like that because they'll look at this and they're like, what is the type of worker asked to stop? You kind of have to know that, that this is a promise and that getting the future gives you a standard future. Yeah, it's exactly like the var in JavaScript. Well, some people really don't like it that, it, that auto is used too much. And oh, my camera is uh, giving me the, the, green, the blue halo. That bugs me, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn up the uh, color key aggressiveness. There we go. Right, so we're not getting a future anymore. We're making it a condition variable. Worker asked to stop or wake up. We just need to make that, that's gonna be in shared. Because that's where the future was, right? No, it wasn't. Where was it? Oh, it's in the impl. Yeah, we can put it there. Yeah, so we can we can put it in the in this object. So up here. Standard condition variable. I have to say this is notified whenever the thread is asked to stop or to wake up. I think we'll keep that though. Um, you know what? I shouldn't have deleted that last line though. Let's see if I can, oh, not see make, git lens. If I can get back that line I just deleted. Committed change. That's exactly what I want. Yeah, this one. I want to keep that around. We just won't use it in this loop. Um, I'll use it. Where where should I use it? Let's use it at the top of the loop. If worker asks to stop, wait for zero. Can I just put zero here? Equals standard future status ready. Then break. Okay, it doesn't like... Oh, I need to turn... No, that should have been fine. Oh, it doesn't want zero. Chrono, how about seconds? I looked this up the other day and like, there's no easier way to just pull a future in C++. So you have to wait for a zero time to see if it's ready. This one, we need to add the lock and then we add... What do we do? while it's not, while it times out. Right, it needs, it needs an expression. So the expression will be what? Actually, no, I just don't need, I don't use wait for, I just use wait. Oh, no, hold on, um, sorry, uh, my bad. I need to combine these two. I need to predicate this. And I put this in there. Return this. Ooh, yeah. That won't work. How do I do this? You can't just move a future around, can you? It won't. I don't think it'll let me do this. Yeah, it won't let me move a future around. Um, shoot. Oh, I, I know what I'm going to do. Back up, and we'll make this the while. Ooh, 
we're polling. We're, we really are polling here. And now, instead of doing a... Well, hold on. Oh, instead of doing a wait for, we just do a wait. We have no uh, clause there. Why does it not want me... Oh, missing a semicolon. There we go. And if we move this wait to the end, right? Uh, no, no, no. We don't need to. The idea is that we'll signal this every time we uh, want it to, to go faster from the unit test. So it, it, we can make it not wait at all. I think this will work. You just need to signal this now. Um, didn't, didn't I set this up? We can build it into this. So I can do this, right? I can say info this dot signal or notify one. Okay, but when we tell it to stop, I need to also put it there too, I think. That is in the mobilize right here. To wake it up if it's actually wait waiting. And we probably want to do that inside of this. Actually, that can be a lock guard. Lock guard, you use, it's a little bit lighter weight if you don't need to do an unlock like that. Actually, that um, that's why I did it there. I used a unique lock so I didn't have to have a weird looking scope. I can just do an unlock. Any chance these latest streams end up in the YouTube channel? Yeah. I... I think I forgot to upload them yesterday. The problem is that you have to, I have to wait 24 hours. Otherwise, I'm, I'll be in trouble from, uh, well, technically in trouble from the Twitch affiliate agreement. Things have to wait 24 hours. So I'll catch them up. We'll just be 24 hours delayed. I think I'm like a day behind in upload, in uh, exporting them. <sighs> okay, so... This wakes it up if it was waiting. We set the value so the future will be ready. And then also when we wait, whenever we wait, we want it to wait one loop. We wake it up if it was already waiting. It should run one loop and then go back to sleep, right? Let's see if that did anything. I want, to, I want this to run faster. Okay, I screwed something up. Uh, what did I screw up? server to a 309. Oh, yeah, I guess this does have to be a wait for. But we don't need a predicate as long as we um, don't need a return value. Oh, there is a CV status. Hmm. Okay, well, I don't care about it. Okay, let's see if that worked. And it crashes. Mobilize twice. Ah, okay. So, let's see. Mobile, it's the mobilize twice that's, that does it. I don't see why. Maybe I should just run it. No. Okay, why would it crash? Okay, here's here's one of those instances where I kind of don't feel like spending time to figure out figure out my head or my print statements or anything, and I just run it in Visual Studio because that that I, I can tell it to stop if it crashes like that. I just have to run Visual Studio, which is a bummer. I was on Linux, I'd be like, oh man, figure this out the hard way or switch back to Windows.
Visual Studio's got to catch up in its build then from last time. Okay, here we go. Here's the crash. Oh, uh, I think I might know what it is. Yeah, so it's a recursive lock problem. We already have it locked, and we try to lock it again, and it's just a normal mutex. It says, I am just a normal mutex. Why are you trying to lock me? Yeah, let's solve this by not locking right away in that worker. We'll We'll lock after we've done our startup stuff. Right about there. Hey there, Buffasense. Test something, pass. Test something else where you're unsure of the worst pass. T creating a bug like us. Yeah, <laughs> why did it Why did it not crash? Hey there, Sourcefy. How's it going? Okay. Go back to the VS Code and run it again. I'm just being optimistic here that I fixed it. If it still takes 10 seconds, I'll be bummed. No, now we're down to 5 seconds. <laughs> 5 seconds is better than 10. Um, but it's still taking 5 seconds, so... Hmm. Um, it's probably the tests not waking enough. Waking it up enough. Hmm, maybe I got to use a profiler to see what's taken off all the time. I'm not set up to do that right now. Each time one of these runs, it's going to do what? Oh, hold on. I hear my k kitty scratching at the door. I'll be right back. That way, uh, I'll just hide the camera and I'll be right back. Kitty was scratching at the door to get let back in. Yeah, I use OBS. Um... It's actually in my specs here. OBS Studio Voice Meter Banana. And there's all the other junk there if you if you wanted to know. And um I have a I have a poor man's green screen behind me, which is why the color keys are all screwed up. It's as the light intensity changes during the day or if it gets cloudy. Actually what it is is I'm getting light reflections, so hold on. I'll be right back. Getting light reflection from behind me. So now it's somewhat better. Yeah, I need to adjust the color. What I really need is a more professional setup where I have controllable lighting. Smoke is gone now, but I'm going to be sort of being eaten away on the sides here. I think the price I pay for having a poor man setup. So, wake it up and then wait for it to go one loop. It should, oh, where, am, where am I going? To the worker. This should never wait. Here's where it might wait. Does it wait? It doesn't wait anywhere else. Why does it friggin' take five seconds?
Hmm. I wonder if it's the setup time. I could test that by just uh, increasing this. If it still takes five seconds, then it's the setup time. If it's taking takes longer overall, it's uh, each iteration. Yeah, so it's each iteration is taking longer. It's taking some amount of that time. Actually, I did it times 10, so that'll take 50 seconds, won't it? But while it runs, let me look at the code and try to figure it out. So every iteration, it's waiting for longer than it should. It shouldn't wait at all, because I should be constantly calling that, which should wake it up. It does wait, after waiting up, it waits for a loop to be completed, but that, it should be doing that. So it, it should be waiting there, it should wake up, and at the end, it should signal that the loop was completed. I wonder if there's some race that has to do with unlocking here. What if I move this lock to here, and move this to here? That took 35 seconds. Now it's crashing. Wonderful. Uh, back to... Uh, let me see if I can reason this out. Uh, probably in here, right? It gets the lock. Comment that out for a second. Actually, that solved it. We're now down to two seconds. So it, it was a race in here. Because I don't need to get that lock anymore, I'm just going to collapse this function out completely. But thanks for the follow, Kazat. My cat wants attention. Sorry, kitty. I don't know if you guys can hear him, but he's yelling at me. What do you want, kitty? You don't want to tell me? You're just gonna gonna yell at me? Sometimes he'll uh, start rolling on the ground, and that's the sign that he wants to be brushed. I I, I showed Adam a link or an image of that once, and it was I thought it was much funnier than other people thought it was, but he amuses me. All right, um. That's there. So really, this is the only stuff we do unguarded, which is fine. That's the meat of the loop. And I, I probably should just put that into its own method. Because this... Uh, I missed the follow. Thanks for the follow, Buffoffins. Buff... Buffosens? Adam is being boring. What's Adam doing? Adam's never boring. Playing with scissors. What's What's going on in Adam's channel? I refuse to believe that he's being boring. He's working on DevOps today. I should shout out to him. Anybody who doesn't know about Adam's channel, you should go check him out. I refuse to believe he's being boring. Probably he's just struggling through DevOps for his game right now. I'm going to be optimistic. Okay, so this is good. I, I, I like having a much tighter bin here, which means I could probably reduce this quite a bit. Let's let's try to see if I could be very aggressive in uh, the bin size. No, wait a minute, I can't do that. That's governed by the number of iterations total, which I don't really want to change. Dev is it just the DevOps? You don't like the DevOps? I I I, I understand. Two seconds. Okay. And I suppose that if I then back this back down to one, it'll be real fast, and then I'll be really, really happy, and we'll continue. No, so it's all startup. There's some startup delay. We'll just keep the bin tight like that. And we'll, I think we'll just live with the two second, how long it, it takes 2.3 seconds to run that test case. We're still good, I think, because if I run all my tests, the long pole is still system abstractions. 
See, it takes two point. It takes double the amount of time. So we're we're not the long pole with this. Let me just check this in. So really, this is mostly hacks to speed things up while in while in testing. So we have a refactor to in, increase speed while testing. Yeah, so rule of thumb is you want the unit test to be quick enough so that you don't mind run, running them all the time. If they start to become a burden, then it it points to one of two things. Either you're not being smart enough in the unit test, which is my problem half an hour ago, and that it was simply just sitting there and wasting time. The other problem it could be pointing to is your unit tests are actually doing integration level or you know larger scope testing and you really should break it up. Uh, that's more likely in large scale projects or like large team projects. So unit tests are meant to be run often and quickly. You're a stupid coworker? All right. I'll I'll just I'll just uh Defer to your judgment. Uh, okay, so we're done with making that test run fast. I'm done with my plan, so now we're in bonus time. I like being in bonus time. All of this is what I did today. So recapping what I did earlier. There was a random API problem that I saw that some functions were in a place that they shouldn't be, so I moved them. Then I made it sure that made sure that our servers never send messages to themselves. Because that would be crazy. And I made sure election messages go out to everyone but the sender. So that kind of uh, is part of that. So it goes to everyone but us. And we uh, we did the retransmission stuff. So there's an RPC timeout now. If we don't hear back from a voter, we will request a vote again and again. And then we did this random distribution, which took a bunch of time to to test quickly and well enough. So we're in bonus time now. Yay! How do you even test that? It wasn't that hard because the test framework hooks in this callback and basically when the server sends a message, it says who, who it's sending it to by ID number. And uh, we just, in our test, where was it? We just made sure it didn't send it. Where did I, where, how did I word this? We, we collected the set of all instance numbers. It was a vector. We turned it into a set and then we removed from that set all instances that the, the unit under test tried to send to. And then we made sure that the only one left was itself. Yeah. Okay. So I got 15 minutes left before I got a rep really end and then prepare for my call at two, so. Yeah, so the senders always send through a callback, and so we just make sure that when they call us back, they never, we record that they they never try to send to themselves. They, it could send to itself internally, but I'm trying to code the server so that all sends go through that callback. In fact, I have like a send message and it always goes through the callback and it never goes loops internally back to its own receive. There's a receive message. I just need to make sure a send message never calls receive message directly. So yeah, let's, I think for the bonus time, I'll just look at those test, those unit those use cases that I um, haven't coded yet. Server does not receive majority of votes in the election. So that implies that it receives all the votes and it didn't get a majority. Okay, we can code that one. Let's let's take the one for does not receive but does receive non unanimous and uh forgive me for the long test names. It helps me though. We'll re we'll call this. How about just does not win election? Yeah, don't tell 
a day of that though, playing with scissors. I got in. Wasn't it you who got me in trouble? Someone got me in trouble with the day. Okay. Uh, so, right, we don't. We don't pretend like the thing responded to itself, but everything else. Why don't we just have them all vote no? Maybe we need two cases. Does not win. Uh, okay, we'll make two test cases. First will be. Does not receive any votes. So that's easier to code. It's just that they all say nope. So we just expect false. <laughs> okay, that's the easy case. The not so easy case would be... Actually, let me undo this. Make a copy of it. And then redo. And then paste. Except for I wanted to keep this. It's also not the leader at the end. How about server gets some votes? But loses in election. So we'll say, let's just reverse this logic. And we'll say two is the lone one that voted for you. Everyone else voted against. Actually, I'm going to turn it around um, and say almost wins election. So that means they get two votes. So it's going to be, so the ones that vote against will be two or 11. Let me expect that it doesn't become the leader. All right, let's try this out. This ought to be already working because the logic whether it wins the election or not is just a simple comparison. Ooh, it lost one of them. It actually won both elections? I might, maybe I didn't do that right. Five, eight, three, and six, one, nine. Hmm. So it somehow won. I guess I was wrong. Oh, look at that. It thinks that everyone voted for it. That's not good. It should only it should be checking to see if it actually got the vote. So if message I might have said this yesterday. I did this on purpose to catch myself. If vote results... Come on, IntelliSense. Vote granted. Only, only do that. There you go. That should fix it. Yeah, it's not good to... Um, to say, hey, yeah, I won because everyone voted, whether and just re disregard whether they voted for you or not. Okay, what? One, I'm still failing. Six nineteen. Six nineteen. Almost wins. Okay. So it should have only gotten two votes out of five. I don't see how that could happen. Two yes, two no, one timeout would be it's not done yet. So it wouldn't win. And it also, um, it'd be retransmitting the uh, one that it hasn't gotten a vote yet from. I haven't coded this yet, but um, we need to have a yeah time up before all votes received. I have to do that later.
that election timeout. If there's a RPC timeout, it just retransmits. So we already have a test for that. I do need for if the entire election times out, what happens is it's uh, treated like a split vote, so it's like no one won, and so it will start a new election, incrementing the term again. I think. I have to check the spec again. It either increments the term or it just retries the election by going out to everyone and requesting the vote again. I'm doing something wrong here. I don't know what. I know what I'll do. I will put some breakpoints here, tell it to go. And then we'll count each time. We'll see what happens each time we go into here. So go. This is two. Didn't vote for us. Six. Did vote for us. We have... Uh, Oh, it's including itself. Yeah, okay, I, I my math is wrong. It's Monday. I'm surprised no one pointed it out that um, the leader always votes for themselves. So if 2 and 11 vote no, that means it does have a majority. So it needs to be 2, 11, and one of these. One of these two has to vote no also. 6. There we go. So it wins, even if even if it times out because there's only five so you can't get two yes two no in a timeout one's an automatic yes well it's the self vote if you counted the self vote as one of the two yeses yeah you could have a timeout cool so that's working let's check that in see so yeah, that that's easy to say server Check for election losses. So don't count a vote. Don't count a vote for us if they. Uh, what's literally what the what the variable name is? Vote granted. If the vote isn't granted. Okay, down to five minutes left. I don't know if I have time to do another test case. I might just wrap things up. Yeah, I think I'm going to wrap things up. So well, I'm just going to double check things, and I'll go over what I did today, and then I guess at what I'll do tomorrow. And then I uh, will go host someone. Push that. Okay. So today, I hope you enjoyed today. What I did was... A little bit of cleanup at the beginning, and then I struggled for about two and a half hours adding more use cases to the raft election. So the good thing is a lot of the election is covered, but the bad news is a lot of it still isn't. So right now, I am not checking for election timeout, and also these cases where someone accidentally or purposefully, maliciously votes twice. Actually, we won't have malicious votes. But we might get a double vote by accident because the, of a retransmission, right? And this could happen for the same reason. So we need to, we need to do these cases. Also, what I haven't tested at all is being a, ca being a, a follower and voting for a candidate. So that's what I'll probably handle tomorrow. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up being a candidate, and then I'll handle being a follower and voting for a candidate. Actually, there's a third case, which is where you're a candidate, and another candidate beats you to it, or another leader steps up and takes over. So those extra three or so categories of use cases, I'll see if I can get through them tomorrow. Hopefully they should be a lot easier than the ones I did today, especially this one, which was hard. And then that'll be it for elections. And... What's after elections in Raft? I guess that's log replication. So they'll be finishing up elections and then handling log replication, which is really the whole point for this algorithm, is that the servers all have the same same server state, which is same log of state changes. So I hope you guys enjoyed the stream today. I'm going to go peek off stream to see who we can host now.
peaking. Sounds like a pain. What sounds like a pain? Doing the log replication. Actually, once we have uh, the the leader, it actually becomes pretty easy, I think. Same state. The, alg the algorithm is designed to help us get there, so it sh hopefully it's not too much of a pain. Hmm. I hosted Adam yesterday, didn't I? Couldn't host Simuleos instead or Honest Ga Dan Games. Let me peek and see. Oh, what else? Iris John Gaming. He hosted me a while, a couple days ago. Maybe we should return the favor. Let me see what Irish John Gaming is doing. Multiplayer pirate game, PvP team games, rescoping for the. Okay, so we'll host him. Let me get the link here. So Irish John Gaming. He was gracious enough to host me the other day, and he's working on an interesting. I think it's a Unity game. I could be wrong. But it's uh, multiplayer pirates shooting cannons at each other. It's all in good fun. So we're going to host him. So hope you enjoyed today. I'll see you tomorrow, probably 10 a.m. Pacific. Until then, my friends, enjoy your rest of your day or your evening or your morning. Bye-bye.